everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Um, we are with Elka Scholes and we are talking about her book, The Anxiety Warrior. And so we're in part three. And um, in this segment, we're going to be talking about the 11 layers of anxiety of which you've already talked about a couple of them. So welcome back, Elka. Thank you. Thank so, you. So what's the idea about the 11 layers of anxiety? What, what's the, what's this? About. That's a great question. And um, as you know, as, as I've been sharing that I have anxiety myself. And so what I discovered was, you know, we would fix one thing or discover another source of anxiety. And, you know, one day it worked, and then the next day it didn't work. And so mm -hmm. that can be really confusing. And what I noticed too, with my clients, they were experiencing the same thing. So we started coming up with different layers and different sources of where can anxiety come from? And as you said, we did talk about uh, substances and um, physiological. Um, another one is reality. And here's the thing. Um, sometimes we just have a lot on our plate and we get anxious. And so sometimes, you know, people will come in and, and you know, you might say, well, I'm, I'm going to be moving soon. I've just changed jobs. And then I'm waiting for a diagnosis. Well, and I can't sleep. And I and so I'll tell people, <laughs> well, you know what? I wouldn't be able to sleep either. So sometimes we just need to hear that, you know, it's okay to be anxious. It's okay, uh, perhaps just to have a tough time and know that um, right now we're doing some big things. Moving is like number one in the stress and, um, you know, getting a new job. Those are way up there. And um, so any of these reality things, uh, they may just create anxiety and, and it could be so many things like decision making, uh, finances, perhaps it's, uh, we talked about dating, maybe it's that mm -hmm. those first few dates, um, perhaps it's a deadline for a project, um, perhaps it's, um, like I said, a diagnosis or perhaps upcoming surgeries. Um, maybe it's an exam. Um, maybe it's a job interview. So some of these things we can, you know, sometimes navigate. However, other times, if we have a few of these on our plate, uh, we may find we're a little more agitated and um, uh, we're, we're probably not feeling as well as we could. And, and there's things to do um, to supplement. Um, one of the things that we didn't talk about is you know, when we are doing something like this, I liken it to running a marathon with your nervous nervous system. Mm. So if we're doing that, it makes sense to feed our nervous system. Mm. And there's a lot of things you can do, calming teas, essential oils. Um, there's a great uh, nutrient uh, supplement. It's calcium, magnesium. Your mm -hmm. nervous system loves that. And when you, we're highly stressed, where we're using a lot of that. And like mm -hmm. any sport, you know, you're going to be supplementing. Well, why not supplement our nervous system? Mm. And the same as um, uh, uh, B12s and stress vitamin Bs, mm. they absolutely help. And if we know we're, we're moving into um, a space or a situation that is really going to... Um, max us out <laughs> right uh, then why not support ourselves uh with some strategies and natural uh remedies uh from all sy systems right right yeah so so i'm what i'm hearing is that reality happens and so what right. i understand from our previous segments in part one and two if it's chronic if you're chronically in a state of, but there's going to be where life is just happening. You, you talked about all those stressors, right? The only thing you met, miss is like death and getting married, but like moving, you know, these are all losing a job. These are all stressors. And so it would be totally normal for anyone to be anxious during those times. And so I love the idea of just taking some B12 or some supplements or some Cal magnesium kind of supplements. I don't, I think we don't think about you know, if we're running a marathon, we think about drinking Gatorade, but we don't think about like, yeah, we are doing a marathon, but it's not like if like, you know, right. you're running, but it's the same kind of thing. Absolutely. And, um, and, and, you know, it's interesting because I've ran big events and 
having anxiety, I just, the week before, I know that I'm going to be maxed and stressed, even though it's exciting. And it doesn't always have to be something negative. It can be something very exciting, but you know that you're, you're just really using all your faculties. Well, I, I would then kind of beef up my, um, my uh, uh, diet, my uh, supplements, I would be using essential oils. And you know what? Mm. I was golden. And um, interesting. Um, it's great. And, and you can function. And it, it is like having a mental, being a mental athlete. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. And, so, and the ones that we didn't cover, they covered before, you're talking about substances. So it's alcohol, coffee, certain foods you're allergic to or physiological um, kinds of things, like maybe you're sweating at night, those kinds of things. And then um, overstimulation, we talked about coffee, but what is overstimulation? Well, that's interesting too. Um, actually, and that has a little funny story. I, I uh, go out and do public talks and, and I was just heading out the door one day and my daughter said, don't forget about overstimulation. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, cell phones, rapid texting, emails. And, and, the, and I thought that was very brilliant because what happens, and this has been going on for a while and it's not a negative thing. Again, it's just something to be aware of. So when I was doing my master's um, in Switzerland, and this was years ago, there was already talk about this expectancy that we have when we have a cell phone. Mm. And it, and I noticed it already. Um, I noticed it when I got a computer with emails. And it was interesting because I even noticed it myself because I thought, oh, I emailed them. Why are they not <laughs> answering right. back right, right away? And, and with texting, of course, um, there's this expectancy. And um, it just raises our stress level just a little bit. Again, it's not a negative thing. Um, it's just one of those things that that it puts us a, a little bit on high alert because we're waiting for something. We're waiting for an answer. We're expecting um, some kind of stimulation. And so, and this is a thing um, really with kids as well. And cause they're on their phone a lot. And that's why we have uh, phone plans with unlimited texting right? because thousands of texts go back and forth. And um, you know, I had a young client uh, that wasn't sleeping well and she said, well, I, I'm, I'm just up all night answering my texts from my friends. And, oh, wow. and on her own, she actually, um, she didn't want to uh, hurt their feelings. But what she did was at school, she said, you know what, I'm going to shut my phone off at nine o'clock. So just know I'm not hurting your feelings, but I'm just shutting my phone off. And um, so, yeah, and, and, you know, it gives your brain that time to calm down and mm. And we've talked about it with TV, with the blue screen. We've talked about it with computers that your brain, when we are looking at uh, these screens, we think it tricks the brain in thinking that uh, it's daytime and that we need to be alert. And what we really want to do is give the brain, um, I call it, um, actually, it's not, I'm not the only one, but we call it sleep hygiene of getting the brain to start slowing down mm. and realizing. Um, it's time to get ready for bed and time to settle because um, that overstimulation can keep us awake and um, people complain about that um, where they're just, you know, monkey mind and thoughts and um, it's just because you've been so stimulated. So, um, yeah, overstimulation. So these, are, so these are some of the other layers notes, cultural and social beliefs you talked about and yeah. when we were talking about PTSD and that yeah. um, sometimes you can, they're either inherited or genetically um, na nature or nurture can actually, um, but are there other parts to the cultural and social beliefs about the, the different layers that we need to know about and that are contributing? There's so stress? many. Um, I list quite a few in the book and, um, and we did touch a little bit on it. Uh, as children, we are sponges and we mm -hmm. don't have any filters and we pick mm -hmm. up the uh, beliefs of the tribe. So here are some, um, and they're not necessarily mine. However, they're just uh, life is dangerous. You have to work hard for a living. Um, opposites attract. Um, boys are tough. Um, 
yeah, I make bad choices. I'm not relationship material. Money is mm. the root of all evil. Those are just uh, some of the um, common ones, but it does get us on the track of, of um, thinking about, you know, what belief have I picked up mm. and um, people have, and you know what, that takes some thinking. So um, uh, don't worry um, if you can't figure them out right away. A clue, though, is if you feel you must do something or you feel mm. you should do something, um, that is definitely a clue that that um, idea is rooted from a belief. Yeah, again, I love that. Yeah, in coaching, they have this idea of gremlins. Like anytime you say who should, need to, must, it, the question that you always ask as a coach, you just say like, who says you must? And it's right. like, well, actually it was my mother. And like, what did she say? And it's yeah. like, you know, you're not good at relationships, you know, whatever it is, but you don't really yeah. know until you go through. And you talked about a checklist in our first segment of, sec of checklists of things to ask, but it's like, where is this anxiety coming from? Sometimes could be a belief. All these different things are like the answer to where could this anxiety be coming from? Absolutely. Um, and and um, it does tie nice. It kind of rolls into the next um, uh, one as well, which is self-doubt. Mm -hmm. So what happens, and as a coach, you would know this is, um, so we have this belief system that we think we should, or like you said, need to need or to, must. have to, yeah. And then our bodies don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> So, so here we are and our bodies, our bodies don't lie. We have like trillions of neuroceptors in our body, not as many up here in our head, which you know we think we do, but we don't. So our bodies, then there's this big conflict going on and, mm. and cartoons, you see the, you know, the angel and the devil and they're mm. having this conversation. Well, we have these conversations all the time is should I shouldn't, I must, I don't, I, why, da, 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 da. I'm, um, and so this self doubt and lack of confidence comes in and that is really based on um, uh, these uh, social and cultural beliefs and they could be coming down culturally. Um, that's why now I put them together because uh, they're not always separate. Um, yeah. So yeah. And, um, and then one of the things we did talk about a little bit was, um, well, uh, two things actually and, and um, is that this can be inherited. So it's a good mm -hmm. time to uh, put that in there. Um, we can inherit our beliefs and also we can also inherit anxiety. Mm -hmm. So um, may have, you know, people come in, they have a great childhood. They don't really have had any trauma or they're feeling very anxious. And then when um, we look at the family, um, you know, maybe both parents have been, have had anxiety and perhaps it's been a thing of the family. It's possible that you mm -hmm. can inherit that. And mm -hmm. um, we talked to about OCD can be inherited as mm -hmm. well, and um, as well as even hoarding. So, so just, um, you know, kind of consider that. The other thing uh, which ties into uh, social and culture beliefs is perfectionism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not bad, you know, I laugh because, um, uh, it's not bad to have a high bar. It's not bad to want to aspire to have these goals. However, we need to really understand that, you know, we're human and we're not going to be perfect. And I don't know how many times I ask my clients, you know, do you expect to be perfect? And they go, yeah, I do, you know, mm. <laughs> and, and that causes such pain. And um, mm. so we need to really look at that and, and kind of go, okay, you know, how do I still have a high bar? How do I aspire for excellence, which are, are good qualities and wonderful things to do as a human? And it's natural, actually. Um, but how do I do it without causing myself pain or pain to people around me? Right. And then negative thinking. Yeah, that, that's that different one. than, yeah, culture beliefs. Well, the negative thinking um, that can that's probably a result too of um, uh, the anxiety. I think what happens is we start um, we we get depressed, and depression and anxiety actually go together, which is mm. not good news. <laughs> mm. Um, so if you suffer from depression, you probably have anxiety. If you have anxiety, you probably, um, have depression off and on. And, and again, um, you know, don't feel bad about that. These are all things that can be managed. Um, 
The other thing is um, having a character trait of um, being highly sensitive, which um, it was in the uh, 80s, uh, was characterized as a character trait. And what's interesting is, um, you know, sometimes we hear, oh, you're overreactive mm -hmm. or you're oversensitive or you're too, too sensitive. And um, those are really hard things to hear. And really what the truth is, is that you have a character trait of being highly sensitive. And um, usually people that are highly sensitive are very intuitive. Mm. Um, they also tend to be empathetic and that's not really mm. a good thing um, because you're absorbing, um, you know, you absorb mm -hmm. other people's mm. moods and that's not really uh, healthy. Um, so there are strategies for that as well. Um, uh, and the good part of it is that, um, you know, you tend to, um, you, you know, people that are highly sensitive are, are animal whispers, like horse whispers or uh, dog whispers. Um, they tend to be very intuitive parents and um, partners. And um, they're people that can go into a room and, and go, oh, yeah, this has good vibes or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about right now. I don't, I don't know when they when they made the book. Um, it was probably about 20, 25 percent of the population, but maybe it's more. So, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I know my my son is highly sensitive. Like there'd be certain like if he would walk into a mall, it would it would make him get very nervous, very worried and anxious because he can hear every sound, he can pick up everything. So yeah. there's no filter at all. Um, um, and so I get that. Memories, yeah. what would that be? So specific well, memories? Um, memories, and uh, here's the thing, um, those I left to the last. Um, mm -hmm. So memories and trauma. So, and uh, the reason I separated them because um, in traumas, we don't always remember, but um, memories can create anxiety. Um, and usually they're not unhappy memories. Um, and sometimes memories still carry a charge or have energy to them um, when they really should be in the memory book or the memory bank. <laughs> um, uh, but sometimes those memories, uh, doesn't matter how old they are, they still have um, a charge or energy. So they, they're upsetting. So they can create anxiety for sure. Um, and then you would really want to... Um, uh, go to a therapist or coach to, to work. Yeah. So that. these, I mean, what's interesting about when I, when we, as we continue on to our next segment, um, you know, there are various strategies, some that are just simple block and tackle, right? Take right. a supplement, drink, you know, more water. Um, don't drink yeah. coffee. Like there's some very block and tackle kind of things. And then there are things that are just like, you know, turn your phone off. Um, and then there are things like, well, you know, you're going to need probably someone to talk it through or contemplate yourself. Like, why do I have this belief? Where is this gremlin coming from? You know, yeah. well, is this like, where, why do I think this? Well, I actually had a memory when my, you know, so these are kinds of things where in the, in the, in the realm of talking to a therapist or a coach or someone else in addition to get some help or even group therapy or group processes. So, right. um, these 11 layers of anxiety, oh, fear of missing out. That's another one that we don't yes. have on this that list. One went that. With, um, uh, that one, uh, FOMO, fear of missing out is again, um, fear of missing out on texts and-, and uh, Ah, and so that's of, related um, to the distraction. Yeah, relates to that. And okay. um, so so one of the things, and you're very right, and 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 that's what stimulated me to, to write the book and- because there's so many strategies, like remember that zero to 10 scale that we talked mm -hmm. about in part one? Well, you know, you might, or I've had people in audiences, um, you know, they were, they were an eight or they were a seven. And, and after even just the talk, they went down to a two and a three. And, and a lot of these strategies, you can take down these notches. And when you get to a two or a three, that's, that's manageable. That's yeah. okay. And, and I think most of the time, even in what's going on in the world, we can bring those, st that stress down to uh, a two or a three. I think we can do it very simply. Like you said there, you know, we can roll up our sleeves and there's the bullet points and we can do that. Um, and, and, you know, what I, what I really encourage is let's at least get that far. 
and then if there's still issues, yes, then, then seek professional help. But in the meantime, I think there's a lot you can do uh, together, um, even with friends or a group and, and uh, with these strategies and, and have, uh, enjoy your day better and have a better life for sure. Yeah. Okay, so um, next in the next segment, the last segment, we're going to be talking about two techniques. There's one's a tapping calming and the yep. other one for five senses. So we're going to be, that's what's next up on the docket. Um, we've been talking to Elka Scholes about her book, Anxiety Warrior. Thank you so much. <laughs> 